Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Yes, she's back. We have the one and only Anna Kelly, who's been on hiatus for a couple of weeks. How you doing, Anna? I'm doing great. It's great to be back with you. I spent some time in your neck of the woods in Malibu <laughs> last week, so it was pretty nice. Yeah, Malibu, that's next level stuff. So I saw you were at uh, Kathy Fetke, I think her name yes. is, her mastermind. For uh, She's nice. wonderful. I've, I have interviewed Kathy before. Uh, so wonderful. Nice to see you there. Yeah. Malibu's pretty, pretty nice place to be, but yeah. I want to talk about, as I often do, you put out just a heartfelt action oriented post on Facebook yesterday, basically saying, get ready. Things are about to get worse. E get, get even more ready than you think you're ready is how I kind of took it. So why don't we talk about your Facebook post yesterday? What inspired it? And again, how people can take action today. Absolutely, Michael. So, you know, we've been talking to people since really all of the pandemic money started flowing, that this is going to be kicked down the can. And in a few years, we're going to see some major inflation, right? Yep. So we've been talking about it, not doom and gloom, but just being cautious, being, you know, watchful. And in some ways, you know, some people are like, see, you were too conservative. The last year values skyrocketed. They went crazy. Stock market's booming, right? But I stuck to the fundamentals that we have to be cautious mm -hmm. and wary and say, let's take some risk off the table. So you and I've talked a lot about that. Keep investing. Always a good time to do a good deal. But you have to start watching the warning signs. Oh, yeah. And when they're all flashing red and then they flash faster and deeper <laughs> and brighter red, it's like, hello, yeah. here's your sign, right? Yeah, exactly. And exactly. I'm still seeing so much exuberance, right? Yeah. Um, that's really, that doesn't make sense with the data that says it's just going to keep getting better. This is a blip. Inflation's going to be so much better tomorrow, which was today. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, everything's just going to keep going up. They're like, buy in crypto. It's super low. It's just going to double <laughs> again, Right buy into the stock market now, it's super low, it's going to go up again, buy into large commercial real estate, I, I you know, saw that. Yeah. just keep going. And listen, I wish it was going to be positive too. I, I want to be all buying in too. But yeah. I'm a net seller, because the old adage, even though you can't time the market perfectly, you can read the signs and you buy low and you sell high. Yeah. And when everybody is still greedy, despite the signs, that's when, as Buffett says, it's time to get fearful. Mm -hmm. And then when everybody's really fearful, then that's when you buy. But we are not there yet. And I think that was the point of my post, that there's these bear market bounces where you have a day of the stock market rally and people go, it rallied today. It's mm -hmm. all going to get better from here. And I just want investors to take a step back, come down from the height of the emotion, look at the data and say, we could be in an everything bubble. We have mass inflation. We could be heading into recession if we're not already in stagflation. And we need to adjust the sales a little bit, take some risk off the table and come off of the, the height. Yeah, it's, it's really funny, right? Um, you and I have over 40 years of investing in real estate together. And uh, more importantly, we've taken action and been right. I, I'm... It annoys me a little bit uh, where we get people who have five or six years experience and only have known this up market yes. basically telling us we're the fool. I just want to remind people that David Portnoy about a year ago, maybe 18 months ago, was chirping at Buffett saying he's the next best thing and Buffett's over. Yeah. Freaking A. Uh, some of you real estate investors are doing the same. You're like buying in right at the peak, right? Yes. You, you, you're... I, I saw you, I saw your post, I read it, and I saw some of the comments. Some of those people I know, and I'm like, guys, you're not listening. Just because you closed a deal doesn't mean it's a good deal. Just, I mean, the 10 year treasury was sub 1% for like two years. Now it's over right. three. You don't think, you don't think your investors who used to want to get 6% preferred now don't want more? I mean, you went from a 5% delta to three at some point. Yes. It's just, I saw lots of people in that response who still want to buy because they think the party's not over. I mean, dude, the party's, the, the, the alcohol's gone. The drugs are gone. The music has stopped. Yeah. The police are at the door and you're still drunk. It's yeah. not going to be yes. good. 
And, you know, I'm especially nervous for two, I, I'm nervous for a lot of groups right now. I'm just going to be honest. Right. And, and you and I are, are optimists. I mean, we have a show about building slow wealth, growth, yeah. low growth wealth through real estate. Right. And so, yes, we believe in it or we wouldn't still be doing it. Right. I'm still buying, but very slowly, mm-hmm. very carefully, you know, passing on probably 199 out of 200 deals that I see. Right. Yeah. Um, but I'm especially worried for two groups. Passive investors who think they're now they want out of the stock market. And so all the multifamily syndicators, many of whom are my friends that I love and like, right, yep, yep, um, yep. are saying, oh, you're, st- you're poor stock market. Just come in our multifamily and you'll make 6% without much risk. And the reality is these multifamily large deals, right? I'm mm-hmm. selling three big ones because mm-hmm. it's time to sell, not to yeah, buy, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, they are being bought with bridge debt. They are being underwritten that rates will be just as good in two years when they decide to exit, two or three years, and that cap rates will not go up, meaning values will not come down. And here's the thing, Michael, and again, I'm not knocking on Marcus and Milichap because they're, they're some smart people, right? They're big mm-hmm. in, in commercial real estate, but they just did their annual report in a couple of weeks ago, and I listened to the whole thing. And all of their guys who are sales brokers, by the way, say cap rates are not really that aligned to interest rates or treasury. (laughs) And the reality is that just isn't true. That's just not true. Although it's not always month to month, treasuries go up to three. So cap rates go up, you know, to six. It's Mm -hmm. not immediate, but there is this lag. And sometimes it takes six months to a year where what we have to realize as investors, and this is really important, especially if you are investing in commercial real estate, right? Mm -hmm. Passively or actively, is that investors look at every investment and say, what level of risk do I go to to get a higher return on my money? Mm -hmm. And when treasuries, which has been the benchmark of risk-free, right? Mm -hmm. um, For the full faith and credit of the United States are Mm -hmm. zero, then people will pay about 2.3 to 3% higher to buy safe class A brand new multifamily. So the cap rate spread Mm -hmm. from treasury to cap rates is usually about 2.2 to 3%. When treasuries go to three, right? That's the risk-free rate. Mm -hmm. Why would anyone still buy something at a 4.5 cap or at a five cap when historically they're going to take a lot more risk for that five or six. Mm -hmm. Um, And not only do they have the traditional risk of real estate depreciating, tenant turnover, tenants not paying, but now we have risks of property taxes going up, rent controls, variable rate debt resetting. Most of those things are beyond our control, Michael. So the risk premium that we have to take in order to take on that risk means a much lower price, a higher cap rate and a lower price. Yeah, For those yeah. that think it's just going to go back to normal in two years, I'm sorry, but I would bet a lot of money. I am betting a lot. I of am money betting a lot of money. Yeah. Exactly. By selling a lot and by being very, very liquid. And mm-hmm. I don't want people to get hurt. And here's the other thing. I, I can beat this drum for an hour, right? Mm-hmm. I have become a multimillionaire through slow, methodical, cautious, careful investing. Correct. Not through massive speculation. You can take risk off the table and slowly and methodically grow your wealth and preserve your wealth and de-risk your portfolio and do much better than the few people that'll make millions in two years of, you know, massive um, artificially inflated asset bubbles Mm -hmm. and then lose all of it in the next year or two because of thinking that the party's not over. And I'd rather you be slow and methodical, take some risk off the table. You'll never regret that. Mm-hmm. You'll be able to sleep at night. Yeah. But if you take too much risk because you're listening to everyone saying that there isn't any risk, mm-hmm. you're you're being very blinded and only reading good data and ignoring all of the bad data. And that's what I see all day, every day on Facebook. And it worries me for people. Yeah, it's it's... It was always bad. I've been very cautious about the commercial sector. You, again, folks, if you're not watching Anna's playlist, you need to go check it out because we've been raising this red flag for probably six months. Both of us got more liquid. Uh, both of us got rid of variable rate debt where we could because yes. we, we saw what was coming and we took action early. Yes. Uh, I, I actually think there, 
like if I compare residential where I play and I can, I play in the small multis, 20 units and below, I am not even over on the commercial. I don't want any of that stuff. I think all of that stuff's going to blow up. It's not going to blow up today. Everybody wants it to blow up today. That's right. not how commercial works, right? You yes. have more tenants, you have more income, you can limp along, uh, bridge debt resets at, at different marks. You're going to get the thing called. You're going to do this. It's going to be a year from now. But it will just be like the last housing crash where it will build. There is a, yes. a lot of pain. And I will say it very more, matter of fact, there are LPs today that have already lost their money. They just don't know it. Yes, 100%, right? And you know, the only deal that I still did recently, it's a great deal because it's eight years interest only 3.75% debt in a major market with a lot of jobs, a lot of growth in the population and it's undersupplied. Mm -hmm. So if you can find deals like that where you can lock in your debt, you're not banking on having to sell in two to three years and hoping you got top market rents that never quit going up, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that all the other fundamentals stay the same. So you can find those deals, but they should be very few and far between, right? Hard, yeah. um, and residential, here, here's the thing, residential, I, I have single family houses like you. I have a lot of small multifamily too. And so <laughs> when I've done big deals, what do I do with the money? I go buy small multifamily deals in really good areas that are recession resilient mm -hmm. and that are inflation it, that that help you in inflation instead of hurt you. So I still am a big believer in residential housing whether that's in a house or small multi or larger, it's just mm -hmm. that the larger multifamily because of the price point and the debt that's on them mm -hmm. has you you exponentially multiply the risk per dollar because it's not a $100,000 house that your rate yeah. goes up a little bit or your tenants don't pay. It's a hundred of those $100,000 houses, right? Yeah. Yeah. But what happens, Michael, is people read the headline data, which is what the Marcus and Millichaps throw out. Mm -hmm. We have a massive housing shortage in this economy. And because of that, they think we can suffer no pain. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking, Anna? We have a housing shortage. Our rents are gonna stay up. People can't afford a house, so they'll pay more rent. Um, we'll be able to get high rent bumps. We're, we're going to have no pain. They don't realize that if you have one quarter or two quarters where you don't meet the bank's LTV or debt coverage ratio, they can call your loan and take your property and all your investors lose, right? And they don't realize, I say this all the time on this show, right? I don't like national stats because real estate is very regional and very local. So one area of the country Look at Austin, Texas. I love Austin. I'm, I'm practically from there. I have family all over, right? The prices are so crazy unaffordable compared to wages. Mm -hmm. You could park your money there and you know not make it or have any appreciation for 10 years, even though people are still moving there, right? Well, that, that is even worse. I have people that bought there five years ago now and were cash flowing. They're not cash flowing anymore because the property taxes got them. Exactly. And, and property taxes there have doubled for some investors that I know. So yes. you can't look at one set of data and say, oh, it's totally safe because we have a supply demand issue. It's very yes. regional and also very specific to what asset class and what salary level that you have mm -hmm. in your tenant base, A class, B class, C class. So yeah. just don't look at only positive data. There's positive data to see. But I can tell you, and someone who looks at data every single day, there's significantly more negative data about the trajectory of the U.S. economy that will impact your tenants, their wages, their jobs, vacancy rates, their ability to pay higher rents, even if they want housing. They'll move in with roommates. They'll move back with mom and dad. They're doing it already. And so you just have to have conservative outlook that says, I, listen, I still believe in housing. Mm -hmm. I think it's a positive outlook for the next five to 10 years. And that's why you should buy with a look of five to 10 to 20 years. Mm -hmm. But in the next one to three, I think there's going to be a lot of pain that people don't expect. And you yeah. need to, by all means, even though rates are ticking up, lock in a fixed rate loan. Please. Right? Yes. Lock in a fixed rate loan. People argue, no, variables always so much better in the long term. Yeah, if it comes back down. But what if inflation's here to stay a while, right? What if the government can't fix recession when we hit recession after inflation and has to lower rates again, but they print so much money to stimulate the economy that inflation rises over the long term and we're in a much higher inflationary environment going forward? 
-hmm. That's possible, but people mm -hmm. don't want to read that data. So the more I know, Michael, and I know you're the same way, the more that I realize I don't know, even mm -hmm. though I know a lot, mm -hmm. there's still a lot I don't know that I can't anticipate who, who thought we were going to have war with Russia and Ukraine this quickly, right? It's those things that you're so sure of that get you because mm -hmm. you're blind to the, the warning signs of things that you don't know about yeah. where history doesn't necessarily repeat itself. Some of it does, mm -hmm. but it could be worse. Yeah. So prepare for the worst, diversify, 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 be in lots of different things, have some cash, even though there's inflation, let your cash flowing properties offset the inflation that you're losing by the cash that you're sitting on, yeah. but have cash to protect yourself and to weather a, a bad year or two or three mm -hmm. that might be on the horizon. Wise advice, folks. If you're not following Anna Kelly on Facebook, uh, you're missing out. Where else can people find you? Great. Well, you can find me on my playlist every week. Um, you can find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Anna Kelly, REI Mom. And my website is reimom.com. Thank you very much. Thank you.